Hello and welcome to Smitty's. I am a wood cutting fanatic who loves to run a chainsaw. I run alcohol chainsaws, ported chainsaws, I race chainsaws, and I even run the occasional video. Now remember, I cannot do this without you. You're everything to the channel, so please remember, subscribe, give that thumbs up, leave that comment. Today, we are going to have a lot of fun. Hello, how are you doing? I am actually getting ready to sharpen a chain for the 385. So if you watched the last video, the chain just wasn't quite, you know what I mean? It just wasn't quite there. So the chain was, it was sharp. It was sharp. But what it was is it was sharpened basically for like a stock saw. So it's... The technique is more like uh, what you would get out of an out-of-the-box chain. So I need to sharpen it up for, you know, for something more of like a ported saw performance level. Uh, the chain just wasn't pulling. Pull, it wasn't pulling at all. The, the saw was just overpowering what the chain could do. So that's what I'm getting ready to do here is to get her sharpened up. I am actually pulling the chain off right now. Trying not to drop the saw on the floor. So there we go. We're going to throw that on there and get it sharpened up. I have another one here I need to sharpen up because that one's getting shipped out. But we're going to give it another test run tomorrow. And we're going to see how it does with this, you know, with a freshly sharpened chain for, you know, a saw that performs a bit better. But I'm curious. Uh, you see, whenever we put the, the velocity stack and the stack filter on the 50, we gained a few hundred RPM. And I'm wondering if the same effect will happen with this saw. That's because, well, air doesn't like to turn especially when it's moving fast. And this, the way this is set up, air has to go straight down, make a hard 90, and then into the carb. So what I did is I ordered the stuff, hopefully I got the right parts, to set this up with a velocity stack and everything. Um, one issue I'll find is the tank vent goes through or is connected to that plastic part of the air filter. So I'll see if I can knock it off. But, uh, you know, we're going to see if we can get more performance out of it just by doing that. Uh, the per performance is going to be limited by the weak li weakest link. So that's what I'm kind of doing right now is I got to figure out what the weakest link is. And I kind of think that part of my issue is actually compression. I don't think it has enough compression, which I might as well... Do a compression test right now and see where it's sitting. Uh, I just got a feeling it's a little lower. Uh, this is a high roof build. Uh, what people would consider a high exhaust roof. This is that style of a build. And boy, look at the tune. Let me see if I can focus that. What do you think? Oh, I dropped it. Hmm, here we go. So what do you think of the tune? That's about where I like them. Uh, I just dropped it on the ground and I closed the gap all the way. So I'll have to fix that. But yeah, that's about where I like my plugs to look. So the tune I'd say was good. Let me fix this gap real quick. There we go. That looked better to you. Looks better to me. But yeah, let's get a compression test on this. Once I find my compression tester, there's that. It's over here. I forgot the starter's not on this. I'll have to put the starter on real fast. So the the bolts for the starter were previously stripped out 
and they were jamming anything they could in there to get it to hold. Well, I re-drilled and tapped but my screws. They just, because of the threads and everything, the way they worked out, just wasn't perfect. And my screws ended up vibrating out. So I'll probably have to Loctite my new screws in. Let me see if I can find anything here. A little thread in and hold this starter. But we got two screws in. Let's see what compression's at. I think it's a little low. I did all this machine work, raised the roof a lot. So I basically moved RPM up, but I think I didn't really increase much in the torque range. So, which is why it's having trouble holding RPM up top. Uh, so if you watched the t first test video, she was able to achieve the RPM, but it wasn't able to hold them up there. And I think it's because my compression might be a little low. So we might need to do a tweak there and might need to make a tweak in the uppers to help push the flow towards you know, a higher part of the RPM range. But let's get our compression test. Alrighty. Alrighty. Yeah, I think it could use a touch, but it's actually not that bad. It's sitting at like, what's that, 80, 92, yeah. It's sitting at about 190 PSI. Can you see it? Let me see if I can just show you here. Focus. There you go. Yeah, it's at about 190 PSI. I think 200 is probably where it's going to need to be. So what I'm thinking here is whenever I go ahead and rebuild the bottom end on this, I think I'm going to do just a little bit of machining and try to gain, you know, 10 pound of compression, maybe a hair more. So, like, she's not even broke in yet. The, seat, the, the, the rings aren't sealed or nothing. So I'll gain a few PSI when they seat, but I'm thinking I want to gain at least another 10 pound or so, and that should help it hold RPM better. So what I'm thinking here is I have squishes that in the 25 thousandths. I think if I take that down to 20 thousandths, that'll help. And then I can probably uh, take another five to 10 thousandths out of the combustion chamber, take another five to 10 thousandths off the base. And on top of that, so what would you end up at 10? Probably 15 thousandths adjustment total, I think, and find out where compression is sitting. I think that'll help. Um, she's actually not that hard to start because I put the compression release on. In fact, here, let's do a compression test with the compression release on and see where she's at. It's actually not that bad. With the compression release, we're sitting at about 170 pound. So it drops compression about 20 pound with the compression release. And I could probably modify it just a touch and drop it down even more. That ain't bad. Um, in fact, yeah. And I could start it if it had more than that. So, I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to machine just a smidge off of it. Just a smidge more. And get a little more compression. Um, I actually may not even need to go that far. Now I think about it because it will drop the cylinder. Which will lower the roof. Which will help build compression. So, maybe a 10,000th adjustment is all I need. Because to do that, and after the ring seat and everything, and then after the you know the roof will lower a little, that might be all we need. We do that, 
with a stack filter, this saw, she might be where I want her. Um, but what we're going to do, though, is we're going to test this thing tomorrow with a, a fresh chain, fresh to sharpened chain. But we're going to put the tack on it and see where she's at. And then after I do these modifications, we will see where it wants to run. And then, you know, as we do the modifications, we'll be able to see uh, what kind of gains we get, what kind of, you know, even if we get a loss in performance, we need to keep track of it. You know what I mean? So that's where we're at. Now, uh, if you're familiar with the racing, Saw Racing World, some of those guys run lower compression than this. Um, I believe, again, I say I believe it's to help with starting the saw, make it easier to start. Um, they might run compression releases that are modified. I, I don't know what they do, but it's, it's not uncommon to see 165 pound of compression out of the racing world. And I think part of that has to do with the fuel that they run. Um, they're, they're, a lot of them don't, some of them will run methanol, but a lot of them run nitromethane, which is a much more volatile fuel, which will help make up for the loss of power from the compression. I am running gas. And you see, compression has to do with like the way the, the efficiency in which she runs. So like the difference between five to one compression and 10 to one compression, like I think uh, you get like a 60% increase in efficiency, the, 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 the efficiency of it burning uh, to between those two compression ratios. So, you know, compression matters, especially on gas. You got to get her, you know, to a point that she'll perform, but you got to be careful that you don't screw things up and slow yourself down in the process. So, uh, you know, you start splitting hairs, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, that's what we're doing. I'm going to sharpen a chain and we're going to go from there. We'll give this another test run tomorrow and, uh, in case you guys are interested, stick around and check it out. We're going to do another video on it. Um. I'm going to try to get you guys more videos per week. Uh, I've been running at two videos a week. Uh, it's only because of how much work I have lined up to do. But we are getting into that time of year where it's kind of hard to do some of the chores. So I might, we'll see, we'll see if I can do it. I might try to bump it up to closer to four videos a week. Um, so pay attention to that. Um, there will be some more members only stuff. The members only content is the stuff that I will not post on the regular YouTube side. It's the stuff that's sketchy. It's the stuff, you know, I don't want to put out there for everybody. It's some of the secrets are going to get posted on the members only side, uh, but not all of them. There's some secrets that just need to stay secrets. You know what I mean? But, you know, uh, like the members only side, those guys know what the port work on that Johnson Red 670 looks like. Um, you know, I shared it with them guys. Uh, so, you know, there's little things like that. But if you're interested, there is a members only side. I have been posting the occasional video. Not very often, but the occasional video. And the cheapest option for it is like a buck. So, which I'm talking a buck a month. $12 a year. Um, the money just helps out the channel because, you know, we burn through a lot of cash doing the stuff we're doing, buying saws, buying parts, buying tools and machines and everything. And, you know, it's just a way to help out. Um, we don't make a lot of money doing this kind of content. Uh, it's just, it's not exactly the most popular kind of content out there, if you know what I mean. So we do appreciate any help you guys can give. Now, as far as this uh, 385 goes, uh, well, 390, 385 conversion, I'm actually surprised. I didn't think it had as much compression as what it does. So, yeah, I'm actually surprised on that part. In fact, let's go ahead, get this air filter back on here. 
And since we're here, what do you say we make a little noise? I mean, what would be a video without a little chainsaw noise? I'm leaving the top cover off. I'm just throwing the air filter on just because, just to be safe that I don't suck anything up. I don't want to suck up. So, yeah. What do you say? Let's make some noise. God, I love this sucky starter. I'll figure it out one of these days. This all tickles the eardrum, if you know what I mean. Woo! Really, probably wasn't wise doing that without earplug. But I'm gonna go ahead and work at getting some chain sharpened up. Hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, a little compression test here. Uh, we know where, kind of where we're headed. I'm thinking tomorrow we're gonna run into more of the same. It's just gonna be a better chain. I'm gonna tune it a little bit fatter, which I might as well do that now. I'm just going to crank it up a little bit fatter. There we go. We're going to run up, you know, just a little bit fatter. Uh, I think I think I had it tuned a little lean the last video. Didn't really pick up on it while I was cutting. Uh, I should have, but I didn't. So, yeah, we're going to run a little bit richer now and see how she goes. But anyway, hey, hope you enjoyed this one, and we'll catch you in the next one. Later.